Hi, I am Paul Brody. This is my shop. Welcome. We're going to work on EB today. EB is my electric bicycle. It's a bike that I built for NABS 2013. I spent 90 days working on this bike because I had a deadline for the show. And that's about all I'm going to tell you because next episode we'll go into much more detail on the bike and I'll show you photos of how the bike got made, things like that. But today we're going to work on the center stand. You can see here I've got a stand. This is like a show stand. So if I want to ride the bike, I have to unbolt it and it's not, it's not handy. So I've got some material. I've got bits of metal. It almost looks like a U-lock, I realized yesterday, but it's not. It's going to be the center stand. I don't really have a drawing. I've got, I got a sketch on a piece of cardboard. There's, there's no dimensions, but that's what we're going to make. What I will tell you right now is that we went down to NABS and I thought EB looked great. And I was full of expectations and the bike largely got ignored. No one was really interested in the bike at all at that stage of its life, of her life. I think Amy, EB is a, a feminine name. I think it's a she. EB is short for electric bicycle in case you wondered. There we go. So that should fit. Look at that. It just fits. If that corner gets rounded there a bit, it doesn't matter. So this is 6061. It's one by two and it's five inches long. And I want to thank all the people who've been buying us coffees. It's much appreciated. Thank you. There we go. Center of the hole. Here's the drawing of the, of the top view. And this is the stand like that. These legs have to be shortened. I know it does look like a U-lock. And then these arms come up here like that. This is that. This is the axle that's going to go through. So we have to bore holes here and, and put a, a pinch Allen, Allen screw there to hold it. It's going to be a slot in the hole. And then there's, there's got to be some sort of a, of a bushing. So what I've got is these guys, and these are the same as what we used on our full suspension bike, the libido. That was back in, in the late 90s. So you can see how it slides over. It's a little bit loose. Can you see the slop there? So what I did, I experimented yesterday. I took a piece of aluminum and I bored it out. This is five thou smaller, so this gets pressed in and when that's pressed in see what a, what a nice fit it is and it's a bearing and it lasts a long time there's no maintenance you don't have to oil it or anything it's just it just works like that so that's what we're using for the bushings so the bushings are going to go into into that hole across like that so that's why we're putting an inch an inch hole here is because that's going to go through and it's going to have a pinch lug as well down down that way we got lots to do first step is the mill i'm going to see how fast i can drill this hole just for fun ready not stopping there we go mitch has to go somewhere so i'm under a time crunch he tells me if I lift my hand up every few seconds, that's when the chip breaks. Otherwise, I'll end up with huge long spirals. It's just a little trick. So I'm gonna go down real slow now because it takes out a tiny little cut. Can you see the little chips coming? That's because of the flex in the boring bar. See, it almost goes in, but it's, it's a little too tight. Well, well, look at that. It does go, look at that. That's a pretty good fit. That went all the way through. Okay, we can leave it like that. That's, that's a good fit. That's about... 
That's about half a thou bigger because you have to press with your thumb. I've got an end mill here and I, I, I put little radiuses on the corners here because we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is this here and most end mills have a really sharp edge I don't want a sharp edge, that's like a stress riser. If you can have a little radius in the corner, that's just much better. Can you see here how in, be, in between the bolt hole, that's an eight mil Allen, and the edge there, that's about one quarter of an inch. So I need to go in about that far. So there's my, here's my one quarter inch. I go a little bit more. That's my one quarter inch. Then half of eight mil is four. So that's where the hole's gonna go, right there. I'll leave a little bit, make it a little bit longer. I wanna drill the holes from in the bottom because I'm gonna add a, add a counter bore. That's where the Allen screw head is gonna go up into. It'll make it look a little, little bit neater and tidier. I took a regular drill and I sharpened it a special way. So this is what does the counterbore. This is like a pilot. That's what holds it in the middle because this is flat. It's not, not tapered like a drill bit, that, which often tends to be self-centering. This is counterboring. What we need to do now is to have to drill two holes here. There's gonna be a couple five millimeter Allen screws that go down into here, and then there's gonna be a slot. So we, we need to do those now, and that's gonna be a little tricky because this is at an angle, so I'll show you how that works. If I use a drill, it's just gonna, it's gonna bend and flex. This is so short and stubby, it doesn't flex. That's why we use a center drill. What I got here is a, a 4.2 mil tap drill. I'm gonna plunge this down to, I don't know, somewhere around here. After that, we'll make a thread. So we're gonna go down to about there. That's gonna be a five mil drill down to there. And the head of the Allen screw seats right there. So we have that much space for which the head can rest on and support. I know I went half a thou too much. I know I saw that too. That's okay. You're probably wondering, what the heck is he doing? I'll show you. See, now I can, I can press a piece of wood here. It'll stop the drill from wandering, maybe. Okay, this is the last part to make a flat bottom. Got my spiral point tap so I don't have to go back and forth. I can just go straight down until it bottoms out. It's a time saver. 
Although I have to be careful not to put too much pressure on. It's pretty easy to break a tap. So we're gonna put an end mill in there and we have to come around and make it look nice. So it's pretty smooth. We've got a little bit of a little bit of hand sanding there. You see there's a little bit of a raised up ridge there, but I can I can blend that in. That's not bad. And then over here, I like how the radius comes down and the Allen screw heads are gonna be a little bit proud, and that's fine. They don't everything doesn't always have to be sunk right in. I'm happy with that. We put the vise back on. We need to make the slot. Last, last step in this. Okay, so we're gonna gonna bore, bore some holes. If I had a three quarter inch reamer, I'd just ream it and I'll be done. So this is a little extra time because I do not have a three quarter inch reamer. So this is about a five thou press fit. That's what I think. So it looks like that. So this is the test to see how we did. Okay, so that goes in. It's a pretty good fit because I need a little bit of pressure. And the other side, this one's a little bit looser, but that's okay because I can push it through with my hand. So that's pretty strong. What's gonna happen now that goes like that, that's the front. These pieces have to go here and they clamp around here. So we need a couple washers here made out of nylon, actually Delrin. So let's go make those now, that's not gonna take very long at all. I'm gonna make the spaces out of Delrin. This is a, a kind of a plastic, this is black. I think it's available in white too. This is great stuff. It's pretty light, it's not that expensive and it works really well for lots of things. So if you've never used any, you should keep it in mind because it's, it's good stuff. It machines kind of like soft aluminum, kind of. Take off the burrs on the inside like that. And we have two washes made out of Delrin. That's where the washer goes. That's a good fit. That was a half inch drill. And then this piece goes on top like that on the outside. There's the center of the hole and you see here I've got room for the Allen screw and I've got a little bit of metal on either side. That's what I want. I could go a little bit more this way, but this is, this is fine. 
If I, do, if I put them both in there at the same time, when I close the vise snug or tight, these, these jaws, they want to go like that a little bit. So the top one doesn't get held as hard. Although I can't move it with my hand. But if I put a piece of cardboard down the side, then the cardboard is getting squished and I know that the front, that the top one won't come loose. So I'll get a little piece of cardboard. So if I take cardboard like that, okay, the ends are flush. So that's good, that's not gonna move now. So having a piece of cardboard in, in there is a good idea. It's a one quarter inch drill, it's like a pilot hole. This hole has to end up being half inch. We've got the drill, slightly under half, and then a half inch reamer. There we go, that's pretty quick. That's a half inch reamed hole now. That's a pretty good fit. This is five mil, five mil tap drill. So we'll put it in the chuck, then we'll set it halfway, set the stop. That's the same anchor lube. I use it on steel. I use it on aluminum. It's good stuff. Most of our videos are shot in one day. Mitch comes over, I start working and he's filming. This video, we're on day two now. So we've got the assembly here. It's got nice action. Look at that. I can just move it with finger and thumb and it stays where it is. I was in the shop a bit last night and I made this piece. This is the piece that slides over here. This is what holds the spring. This is the stop. So the, so the center stand only goes up so far. So I've made a couple other pieces. This is what goes into that hole. There's this piece here. This gets welded onto there. That's what holds the spring. So we're gonna go to the lathe now and we're gonna make I made a little sketch here. This is the piece that goes up there to hold the spring. So I've got some stainless steel. That's my drawing. Let's go. Switching tool bits, this one has a little bit of a radius, so I'll get a radius in this corner here. That's what I want. Okay, that looks good. I got a five mil tap. I'll start it in the lathe and then I'll finish it by hand. It's, it's too risky to use a small tap like a five mil and try and make it go all the way through in one cut. So I need to be careful. Yeah, that's got about three or four threads started. So I take it out. We'll go to the bench vise, just like that. So 
So I'm going back and forth now because that's a better way when the metal's really hard. It helps the tap a little bit. If it's soft metal like aluminum, I'll just go straight through. That's where that piece fits right there. So I got my felt pen lines. Let's go to the bandsaw and we'll cut this out. I've already got my, my pinch lug hole all drilled and tapped, slotted. We're going to do some mitering. We're going to miter these, actually this way, at 34 degrees, so that this U-bend U -bend fits in there. And then that gets welded in, and then we set the length of the legs then we weld on the crossbar. That's the sequence. This is, is DOM tubing, it's 095 wall. And this is 4130, also 095 wall. It's kind of heavy, but EB weighs 69 pounds. And if EB's ever on the stand and somebody sits on the bike, that's a lot of weight going onto a stand. That's why a stand has to be strong. You never know if someone's gonna sit on the bike. So I'm going to go up to the line. Should be the right spacing because this is that just these pieces just fit in there I can see a little bit of a gap inside but it's not bad so it's the center stand it's not a frame and it's heavy wall so I think we'll just go for it like that this is my fixture that I'm making up on the spot so I've got my two straight edges here just a couple C-clamps to hold it. It's got a little bit of play. Get the little hammer out. Okay, no play. Okay, I like that. Okay, welding time. What a fine looking fixture for five minute job. I'm going to take out the aluminum axle because then I got better access down in there. It'd be really hard to weld with the axle in place. I'm not going to weigh this. We don't need to know stuff like that. So that is the top of the tube right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to miter this a little bit long, and then and then we'll we'll do a quick a quick check, make sure that everything is good, because don't want the wheel to be too high or too low. My plan of action is to hold a vise in a vise. If I hold this like that, this is going to vibrate. That is too far away. You always want to hold. If you're machining, you want to hold it as close as you can. That's just like a a basic rule of, of machining. I found a stop. This is just a piece of inch metal and it just rests on the vise, and it, but it rests up against the second vise. So when if I loosen this, I slide this in, there's my stop.
What might have happened is it might have, that last weld, it might have pulled it in. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little alignment on a chain stick. This is the spacing of this with the two, with the two Delrin washers, minus 50 thou. So it came in, it pulled in almost a 16th of an inch. So we need to do alignment. I happen to have half inch ready rod. It's the grade eight, it's the strong stuff. You can tell because it's gold. That's a cadmium plating, gold, and got a couple nuts. So we'll put that inside and we'll open it up. Okay, so we are 34 thou over wider. Let's see what that does. So now we're down to 40, so it's come in 10 thou. No, it's gone out 10 thou. So we need more. If you don't measure, you don't know where you're at. So you, you always got to, well, we're at 106. Five thou over, that's good. How's that for a fit? That's pretty good. See where this, this, this tube hits there? That is the stop. That's the angle that the center stand's gonna sit at. It's 12 degrees. Oh, that, I, look at that. That fits around the tire nicely there. We're gonna take out the wood. So, we can, I, I think what I wanna do is I, I wanna take off just that last little bit there, right? So that it goes down to where it was. The, TIG welding time now. Have to weld on one more thing. That's what holds the spring. We'll use the vertical bandsaw and we'll cut out a little bit and just see what it looks like on the bike. Here we go. I haven't sanded all this, but we need to see if it works. So we'll assemble and then do a quick fit on EB. This is the stop for the center stand so it doesn't go up too high into the chain stays. And this is what holds the spring. So we'll see if my calculations worked out. So that's gonna go like that. It needs to be outset a little bit. I'm a little new at this.
That's nice when you can assemble it just by a push fit. I'll just squeeze it a little bit here. There we go. So you can see this is one stop and this is, this is the second stop and this stop here is adjustable. So I'll put some screws in here. We'll see if that's enough spring tension. I might have to have to find another spring that's a little stronger, but it'll work for now. We'll, we'll put it on the bike and see what happens. We have the stand assembled on the bike. Uh, I'm gonna get it anodized. All, all the aluminum will get anodized and the steel will get nickel plated like this. This is nickel plating. So you can see what happens here. I can roll it off. Now, the sp it needs a stronger spring because it, it needs to pull it up, but it does work. So if I do this, there we go, bike's up on its stand. Thank you for watching our video on making a center stand for EB. You can like, you can subscribe. There's also some links. I made up this little card. If you got a phone, there's a little arrow that you can click on, or if you got a laptop, you can click on show more and you'll find a link. We have shirts, we have hoodies, we have mugs, and you can buy us a coffee. We both really like good coffee. That'd be much appreciated. Thank you, stay safe, see you next time.